Hello there, I'm Monica Reinagel, the Nutrition Diva, here with your quick and dirty tips for eating well and feeling fabulous. If you're trying to manage your weight, chances are that you've spent a fair amount of time thinking about hunger. How can you eat less without feeling hungry? Is there any way to control your appetite? How do people who weigh less do it? Do they simply not experience hunger? Or are they maybe just hungry all the time? And how can you distinguish between true hunger and the urge to eat? As someone who coaches people on sustainable weight loss, these are questions that I've spent a lot of time thinking and writing about as well. And today, I want to tell you about the three different ways that our bodies register or experience hunger. I think you're going to find this fascinating. I also have a couple of exciting announcements and opportunities to share with you at the end of the show, so be sure to stay tuned for those at the end. Our show received support this week from Bulldog Yoga Online. Bulldog Yoga Online takes the intimidation out of yoga and replaces it with smiles, great playlists, and no judgment. You can stream a class anywhere, anytime. Now, they have classes for people at all levels, from beginners to heart-pumping workouts, If I'm looking for something that's not only going to stretch me out a little bit, but also put a smile on my face, I log into Bulldog Yoga Online. Try your first month for free at bulldogonline.com slash nutrition diva. And now let's dig into today's... Wait, what's that? Why, it's someone calling the Nutrition Diva listener line. (laughs) Let's see who it is. Hello? Hi, Monica. This is Shelly from San Diego from your first class of the Wayless program. And I just wanted to say how much I appreciated your recent episode on calories. I thought I knew a lot about the subject, but I learned new things and also appreciated the reminder of some of the tips for how to approach weight loss smartly and sanely. So have a wonderful day and keep on podcasting. It's one of the highlights of my week. Take care. Bye. It's great to hear from you again, Shelly. I'm so glad that you found that episode helpful, and thanks for taking the time to let me know. Now, if you missed the episode that Shelly's talking about, I was talking about the hazards of relying too heavily on calorie counters and calculators. I pointed out that we probably also can't rely entirely on our hunger or our satiety signals to tell us when we need to eat and when we've had enough. And I bet that might have been what it was that triggered this question from a listener. Monica, I was wondering what you think about intuitive eating and what the research says about it. Thanks for considering my question. Bye. Intuitive eating is a very popular concept these days, and people throw this term around pretty loosely. It's hard to know sometimes exactly what they mean by it. For some people, it just means not following rigid diet rules, and I'm all for that. But if you're having trouble managing your weight, that approach alone may not be enough to solve the problem. I talked more about the strengths and weaknesses of intuitive eating as an approach to weight loss in episode number 397. Now, on a closely related topic, Cheryl from Massachusetts emailed this week to ask, even when I eat a good-sized meal with adequate amounts of protein, fat, and fiber, I can feel hunger after just an hour or two. And sometimes when I'm experiencing digestive upset, it feels to me like hunger. Do other people have a hard time distinguishing between digestive activity and hunger pains? You bet they do, Cheryl. And in addition to all the environmental, emotional, and social cues that can fake us out, there are a number of digestive disorders, everything from acid indigestion to irritable bowel syndrome, that can cause false hunger or, conversely, mask hunger symptoms. I have some more tips on how to tell if you're really hungry in episode number 387. Which brings me to some fascinating research that my sister Pam, who is a neurobiologist, recently forwarded to me. And I'll be back with that right after we take a moment to thank our sponsors. Every woman should own a swimsuit that makes her feel beautiful and confident. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about MiracleSuit.com. Their beautiful, stylish control swimwear caters to all lifestyles, body types, and sizes. No matter what type of swimmer you feel most comfortable in, you can find it at MiracleSuit.com. They've got one-piece swimsuits, high-waisted bottoms, tankinis, and their fit guide will help you find the perfect style and size for your body. MiracleSuit.com's full range of sizes includes options that flatter all body types, like plus sizes, long torso options, and styles for women with larger busts. 
MiracleSuit.com offers beautiful, exclusive styles that you can't find anywhere else. You deserve a swimsuit that's going to show off your beautiful, flawless curves. Get 20% off any swimsuit from MiracleSuit.com and free shipping and returns on all orders in the U.S. when you go to MiracleSuit.com slash diva. To get this fantastic 20% discount, go to MiracleSuit.com slash diva. I'd also like to thank Beauty by Design for supporting our show. Beauty by Design is a skincare service that connects you with online estheticians to curate the perfect assortment of vegan, cruelty-free, natural products just for you, all for just $15. Take two minutes to answer a few questions about your skin and send a selfie, and then an esthetician will reach out to you by text for your consultation. My esthetician, Michelle, even made time to text back and forth with me on a Friday evening, which was really convenient for me. Now, this is not a subscription service, so you're not locked into anything, and shipping and returns are always free. To experience the world's most personalized skincare, go to beautybydesign.com slash diva and use the promo code diva, and first-time customers will get 20% off. That's beautybydesign.com slash diva and the promo code diva to get 20% off. Researchers Scott Sternson and Anne Catherine Eiselt of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute in Chevy Chase, Maryland, recently published a paper in the Annual Review of Physiology. It was called Three Pillars for the Neural Control of Appetite. Now, Sternson and Eiselt describe three neurological mechanisms that control your appetite. The first one is triggered by low blood sugar. When our blood sugar levels get too low, we start to experience very unpleasant sensations, and those increase in intensity until we get something to eat. Well, actually, it turns out that those unpleasant sensations caused by low blood sugar will start to diminish as soon as we know we have access to food, even before we've consumed it. Isn't that interesting? The second neural pathway is triggered by the proprioceptors in our stomachs that tell us that our stomach is full. As our stomach stretches, we start to feel less and less comfortable, and that decreases our desire to eat. Now, the third appetite control mechanism is triggered by our senses. The sight, smell, and taste of palatable foods arouses pleasurable sensations that entice us to eat. Now, we have talked about all of these concepts here on the Nutrition Diva podcast before, but Sternson and Eiselt have shown that these three mechanisms are governed by completely different neural pathways. They are, to some extent, redundant systems. But here's what I found really interesting about their work. The first two levers of appetite, low blood sugar, which increases the urge to eat, and a stretched stomach, which decreases the desire to eat, are what Sternson and Eiselt refer to as aversive signals. In both cases, our behavior to eat or to stop eating is triggered by the desire to relieve an unpleasant sensation. But the third lever, the presence of appealing food, is exactly the opposite. In this case, our response is governed by the desire to experience more of a pleasurable stimulus. These first two levers of appetite seem purely functional. When an animal needs food, the pain of hunger drives it to seek nourishment. And the discomfort of an overly full stomach prevents the animal from overfeeding to the point of physical harm. The third lever, however is more hedonistic. In this case, the drive to eat is governed not by the physical need for food, but by the availability of pleasure-producing foods. So what's the function of that? Well, perhaps in a time of food scarcity, this may have served to motivate animals to take advantage of occasional nutrient or energy windfalls. But in an era where we're surrounded by an excessive amount of calories, many of which have been literally engineered to trigger our pleasure centers, our innate drive to consume tasty food is literally killing many of us. But this insight can also help us take control. Knowing that the presence of palatable food is likely to provoke a strong desire to eat or to keep eating completely apart from our biological need for food underlines the limits of intuitive eating and also shows that just how important it is to control our food environment rather than rely entirely on willpower. 
I have three practical tips for the willpower challenged in episode number 266. And briefly, they are this. Number one, engineer your environment to remove temptation. Number two, use positive redirection. And number three, keep it simple. You'll find links to all of those previous episodes that I've been mentioning, along with a complete transcript of today's show at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com. And if you've got a question or a comment for me, you can call the Nutrition Diva listener line at 443-961-6206. I'd love to hear from you. Now, I mentioned at the top of the show that I had a couple of announcements. As some of you know, I've teamed up with my Quick and Dirty Tips colleague, Brock Armstrong, who is the host of the Get Fit Guy podcast, to create a group coaching program that we call Way Less, in which we help people create the habits, the mindset, and the lifestyle that leads to weighing less without dieting. And of course, we talk a lot about nutrition and fitness in that program. We have strategies, for example, to address all three of these levers of appetite. But one of the things that makes the biggest difference for our members is the work that we do around shedding the dieter's mindset. And in just a few days, Brock and I are going to be sharing these insights in a free seven-day series called the Wayless Mindset Reset. If you'd like to participate in that with us, send us an email at info at wayless.life and put the word reset in the subject line and we'll make sure you get an invitation. My second announcement is for those of you who are fellow nutritionists, fitness professionals, or wellness coaches. I'm going to be presenting this June at the Idea World Nutrition and Behavior Change Summit in Anaheim, California, and I'm going to be giving away three free registrations to attend this conference, plus an opportunity to be my guest on the Nutrition Diva podcast. For more details on how to enter this contest, visit bit.ly slash Idea World Contest. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Idea World Contest. Our show today was edited by B.I. 